But what if the environment is unstable? What if you need variation? Then you switch not to asexual reproduction life cycle, but you do sexual reproduction. So they also have the ability to undergo a life cycle change. And that life cycle change would be towards this type of new reproduction known as sexual reproduction. Now we went over sexual reproduction in our reproduction videos on fungi. It's essentially the same exact thing in ascomycetes. The steps that I did, about seven to eight steps that we have, almost exactly the same in ascomycetes. So we'll go over them very quickly. Here we have initially the following. The first step is that the conidia if we remember, these are haploid, as I mentioned before down here. Conidia, just to remind ourselves, haploid with N, they're going to fuse with specialized, they will fuse with specialized hypha, so just one hypha, which would just be just haploid. So we have this haploid, haploid fusion, but it has to be of the opposite opposite, remember, sexual variation, right? We want variation. Opposite mating type. Why do we need this? Because we need to pass the compatibility test. If we pass the compatibility test, we will get variation. Variation is key in sexual reproduction. So this makes sense. We have an opposite mating type match. So we have to have N from A and N from B, let's say. We're good. Now, once we do that, we have plasmogamy. So we're going to write plasmogamy, the combination of the plasma, the plasma membranes only is going to happen. So these N and N do not combine to 2N. Don't confuse this fusion event with the fusion of a sperm and egg. This is not what happens. What happens here is just a plasmogamy event that eventually leads to a dikaryotic, this is a term we've mentioned before, but just to reiterate, a dikaryotic hyphae. So we've gone from a single hypha, a single hypha, and a single conidia to now a dikaryotic hyphae, which would be essentially an N plus N overall ploidy. Not 2N, but N plus N, two individual cells essentially in one large structure. I like to think of it as this. We have two plasma membranes fused together. We have some genetic material here. We have some genetic material here, two separate genetic materials, and thus we have N plus, let me rewrite the plus right there. We have N plus N. That's how I like to think of it here. Okay, so once that happens, what's next? What's next is we have to focus on something known as the ascocarp. Ascocarp. The ascocarp is going to be the fruiting body of this structure. It is the fruiting body of a ascomycete. And this is important right now because this is going to be where we have the following. We have an intertwining, a mixing and matching, an intertwining of monokaryotic and dikaryotic hyphae. Monokaryotic, that means just one set of genetic material, one nuclei, let's say, intertwining of monokaryotic plus dikaryotic. So that would be something that's like N plus N, right? So not just N, like a spore, but something that has N plus N, like a hypha and a spore. Intertwining of monokaryotic and dikaryotic hyphae. So it's just a, a region where we have and tons and tons of these events either occurring or not occurring or just happen and collecting together in a structure that's a fruiting body that's going to grow and become bigger. Now, what's next? After we establish this ascocarp, the reason why we establish this is for this following event. The cells at the tips, cells at tips of dikaryotic hyphae, dikaryotic, so right over here, these hyphae and the fruiting body that are at the, the cells that are at the tips of this, so let me just write cells, at tips of dikaryotic hyphae in the fruiting body develop into um, many asci. They will develop into many fruiting uh, they will develop into many asci. We did asci right over here. They will develop into many sexually produced spores. 
formed in microscopic sacs. So there's going to be these microscopic sacs that are being the result of a sexual reproduction event. Thus, we have ASCII forming here. Why are ASCII forming? This is the life cycle of a sexual ascomycete. So thus, it makes sense that ASCII are going to be a result of this. And if this does happen, if these ASCII do form, you will have karyogamy. This is a critical, critical event. This is the combination of this genetic material, essentially where you have this one much bigger cell with the combination of both of these uh, genetic informations giving us a 2N diploid cell. That's karyogamy within each ascus. Within each ascus. Within each area that produces these sexually produced spores. Now, once that has occurred, we're going to just finish up with the final couple of steps. We're going to have meiosis within each ascus. Okay, so if we have meiosis within each ascus, okay, that's going to result in what? We have a 2N cell right here because of the karyogamy event that happened. Now we're going to end up with, in the ascomycetes specifically, four genetically different, four genetically different. Key idea, variation. Why variation? Sexual reproduction. Four genetically different nuclei, all of which are going to be of the haploid ploidy. They are going to all undergo mitosis. And if they go undergo mitosis, it's actually going to happen two times, so 2x. Once you do multiply uh, 2 times 4, you end up with not 4 cells now. You actually end up with 8 ASCO spores, we call them, because this is the site of the ascus, and the ascus is where you have sexually produced spores. Look what we're doing. We're using meiosis, a sexual process, to create spores. 8 ASCO spores have just been made. Once those eight ASCO spores have been made, they will eventually be discharged, released, in other words, from the ASCI upon their maturation into ASCO spores. And once that has happened, they will be released into the air. They will be dispersed. And if they're dispersed, they will hopefully germinate somewhere. And if they hopefully germinate somewhere where it has nice environment, moist with food, and if conditions are favorable, conditions are favorable, we will have a good amount of growth. We will have successful growth. Look how much more complex this life cycle is versus this life cycle is. Why would you ever do this? If the environment is crazy, if things are weird, if things are not stable, if things are stable, do this. Do the same old fast reproduction constantly. If things are constantly changing, you should try to change as well. Become genetically different and do this process of sexual reproduction. Again, this is a lot of information, very nicely summarized in figure 31.16. Take a look at that figure. Take a look at the previous video on reproduction if you don't understand the steps that are going on here. Um, and that's it for Ascomycetes.